Hello, you're listening to The Human Resource. My name is Pandy, and we are coming to you from the station of ICRC-TV in Cincinnati, Ohio. I wanted to talk about pregnancy. Now, if you've been in Human Resources very long, at some point you have either had an employee come to you and tell you that they are expecting or you've had an employee come to you and say, we're trying to have a child, or you've hired someone and they didn't tell you that they were already pregnant, and you've had to deal and juggle with all these balls in terms of what do we do now? If I had only known, but what do I do now? Pregnancy is just a part of life. And what fascinates me the most is here at the beginning of 2023, we have had more recognition, well, let me say equal recognition, to the condition of pregnancy within employment law as we have with the up-and-coming protections of gender identity and sexual orientation. So I really wanted to kind of back up and talk about pregnancy in the workplace and all the protections that come with that. Because what I need you to understand as HR representatives is that when I mean protected, when I mean pregnancy is um, a condition that you need to pay attention to, I mean it only because the government is taking it very seriously. So let's talk about let's talk about all the different things you need to consider if you have somebody pregnant in your workplace. Well, everyone knows the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission oversees Title VII, and Title VII is that that um, clause that says these are the protected classes. These are the, um, well, let me read it to you. The Pregnancy Discrimination Act is an amendment to Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Discrimination on the basis of pregnancy, childbirth, or related medical conditions constitutes an unlawful sex discrimination under Title VII. Women affected by pregnancy or related conditions must be treated in the same manner as other applicants or employees who are similar in their ability or inability to work. Formal language. But basically what it's saying is that Title VII protects those individuals who, again, protected or uh, under the conditions of pregnancy, childbirth, or related medical conditions. We cannot treat them differently. So that means if the department if, if the department uh, is getting a raise or a bonus, they're included if they're a part of that department. If there's a promotion or a transfer consideration, they are a part of that process if everyone else similarly situated is as well. Now, Title VII is not foreign to us. And another part of the EEOC is the Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA. Employers with 15 or more employees are required to provide accommodations to individuals who show a disability or a record of a disability. And pregnancy is, it kind of falls under those two categories. So when we look at offering accommodations, we're looking at individuals coming to us and saying, hey, um, I'm due to have a baby. I may not be able to stand very long or I may not be able to um, only, you know, I may need more breaks. I may not be able to go four or five hours without going to the bathroom. There's all sorts of things that might occur with someone who's pregnant. And here, just this year, 
the EEOC has passed the Pregnant Workers Fairness Act. And it's focused strictly on accommodations. And it's, it's, it's actually interesting. When I was reading through, trying to come up with the, 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 the true reason we had to add another protection, there was even a comment in the, in the uh, legislation saying that accommodations such as allowing someone to take a drink of water, allowing a pregnant woman to be able to sit down periodically throughout the day to get off her feet. These are simple accommodations. And PWFA is a new law that requires covered employers to provide reasonable accommodations to a worker's known limitations related to pregnancy, childbirth, or related medical conditions unless the accommodation will cause the employer undue hardship. Undue hardship is hard to prove. So let's keep going with what these protections are and you know why you should be paying attention to it. Now, the, the, the thing to remember with PWFA is that none of this is going to actually go into place until June 27 of 2023. However, you need to be thinking about that now because June's going to be here soon enough and you should be doing these best practices anyways. Under the ADA, we want to make sure that employers understand that you cannot deny a job or other employment opportunities to a qualified employee or applicant based on the person's need for a reasonable accommodation. That means you can't do it if she's pregnant. You, uh, you can require an employee to accept, you cannot, excuse me, you cannot require an employee to accept a, an accommodation without a discussion about the accommodation between the worker and the employer. Which means, if you've listened to one of our earlier podcasts, you cannot assume that just because she's pregnant that she can't do a part of the essential functions for her job. Start the interaction active process if she's telling you that she's pregnant. Work with her and partner with her on what can she do at various degrees or various uh, phases of the pregnancy and work with her to adjust accommodations if needed. You cannot require an employee to take leave if another reasonable accommodation could be provided that would let the employee keep working. So, ladies and gentlemen, you cannot have an employer look at you and go, look, I don't want her having the baby there. Once she hits eight and a half months, I want her out of here. And I've heard that. I know, laugh with me. Go ahead and laugh with me. But if that worker, if that employee can keep going and they're comfortable, they're, they're safe in the workplace at that level of pregnancy, you can't send her home and tell her she has to take leave. You cannot force vacation on her. You cannot retaliate against an individual for reporting or opposing unlawful discrimination under PWFA or participating in a PWFA proceeding. Guys, you can't retaliate, period. And we've, we've talked about that. So if someone is asking for an accommodation, if someone is asking to stay for a while, this new guidance will make it even harder for you to move them out of the position. But that's the PWA. We now have Title VII, we've discussed. But here, in the first of the year, President Biden also encouraged the uh, Fair Labor Standard Act to pass the PUMP Act. That's P-U-M-P. And I, I love this one because it's basically just reiterating the protections employers must provide for individuals who want to pump breast milk at work. Now, this is not a new concept, guys. I know those of you who, who <laughs> have been around for a while, you're saying, but ACA already does that. I know ACA already does that. And Biden probably knows ACA already does that. But we're placing it under the Fair Labor Standard Act as a protection to make sure that employers understand it is your responsibility to pay and compensate someone 
while they're um, extracting breast milk. For one year after the child's birth, covered employees may take reasonable break time if they need to express milk. And remember, if it's up to 20 minutes, that's a paid break. If it's more than 20 minutes, then it can be unpaid. Uh, factors uh, on the location of the space and the steps reasonably necessary to express the breast milk are really no different than under the ACA. And remember, they need a place to store it, some place that will keep it uh, from going bad. And the frequency and duration of breaks needed to express milk will likely vary depending on the factors relating to the nursing employee and child. So you can't tell her, well, I'll give you two times, but I'm not giving you any more. This is not, this is not something to uh, punish employers. It is not something to complicate your life. But those are three very, very good reasons that you really need to be aware of what's going on with your pregnant worker. So let me throw on one more complication. More than 30 states here in the United States offer protections for pregnant workers. 30. And those protections most likely aren't going to deviate too far from what we just reviewed. And the bottom line here, guys, is if you have a pregnant worker, there are, as you can see now, several agencies of oversight that are going to be watching what you do and who are going to be available to employees if there is a concern, a concern of discrimination, a concern of retaliation, and a concern of maybe they're just not being paid correctly. Look, it's a lot to know. And this is why a good HR consultant, your labor law attorney, and listening to this show is good for you. If you have any questions, you know where to find me. I'm here at The Human Resource.